Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and with this video I am starting a new series where I'll be explaining some building blocks, basic interactions in Figma and using those building block interaction you can build complex prototypes. So I usually post uh, high fidelity complex prototypes on my channel. Uh, I'll link up the playlist here, you can find them there and I'll keep on posting them. But many times it also happens that a lot of people message me and ask me how did you do that, how did you do this? And I cannot explain everything in the video because it will make the videos really lengthy. So I have decided to break it down, create these smaller interaction videos in this particular series so that you can learn directly from here. And obviously the complex one, I'll keep on posting them on my channel regularly. So that's out of the way. Uh, before we start, hit like and subscribe to the channel so that YouTube can recommend it to everyone. And if you haven't, just join our uh, Discord server. I have created a Discord community where we designers hang together and discuss more about design, career, and everything related to design. So do join it. And without further ado, let's get started. So our first topic is called scroll groups or also known as carousals. And they are a very commonly used entity in app designs or in website designs. They're typically of two styles and I'll explain both of them with examples. So let's first see the first one. The first style of carousals are called something like free scroll. Um, so I'll explain you how it works. So for example, right now we have this iPhone 11 Pro Max artboard and I have these four images which I have grabbed from Unsplash. Now what we will do is we'll just drag them to our artboard like this and we'll go in our prototyping tab by selecting our artboard and in the overflow behavior we'll choose horizontal scrolling now let's see how it looks like and that's it that's your first form of scrolling which is like a free scroll and it's called a free scroll because if you see you can just freely move around the scroll in the horizontal direction and this is very simple to do just select the frame and you can go to the prototyping tab and you can select the overflow behavior. You can also make it a uh, vertical scroll if you just want to stack all these things vertically and you can choose vertical scrolling from there. If you want something to move vertical and horizontal both, for example, a map, you can move it in horizontal as well as in vertical direction. And then you can choose horizontal and vertical scrolling both. So the only uh, when using this property, you just should be careful for one thing is that the frame that contains these elements, these elements should overflow from that frame. So for example, if I show you all these four elements, these four elements are flowing out of the artboard frame. So since it's flowing out of the artboard frame, hence we are able to apply a horizontal scrolling in horizontal direction because they are overflowing in the horizontal way. And there's a reason it's called overflow behavior because the content is overflowing from the frame that contains it in our case the four images are the content and they are overflowing from the frame that is the artboard itself in the horizontal direction so we were able to apply a horizontal scroll in the horizontal direction for these four images so always remember that your content should overflow in the direction from the artboard that contains it so if you want it to move vertically then your vertical component your vertical content actually should overflow from the uh, frame that contains it. So this is a very basic form of scrolling that Figma allows. Now, uh, if you see here, if you come to this scrolling, you see that um, our last image, the last image does not scroll beyond this and it sticks to the edge. And now this is something that is not desirable when you design the final design, right? So what we can do is in that case, we can come here and we can select all of these four images and group it and let me call it scroll okay so i have grouped them together and call it scroll now what i can do is um, i can change this group property to frame as i explained frame only contains these options of scrolling horizontally and vertically now if i go to my prototyping tab and if i select this scroll group and i try to give it a horizontal scrolling you will see it shows an error now if you see the error closely, it says for scrolling to work, the frame, the content needs to be bigger than the frame. So what it means, like with the same thing that I explained just uh, just now, is that your content should overflow 
the frame that contains it so if you see the frame bounds is still here and your content is also still there right so nothing is overflowing from your main frame right the scroll frame hence it's not able to horizontally scroll it if i just show you how it looks you see i'm not able to scroll because what is happening as of now is my four images and the frame that contains it the scroll frame is of the same dimension so now to fix this to fix this error what we need to do is hit command on your keyboard select the frame that contains the elements and you can resize the bounds of the frame now i want to resize the bounds to this position or maybe something like this right and what will happen is now the bounds is smaller than the content here now the content is overflowing from the scroll frame and now we'll be able to see that we are able to scroll so if i come see i'm able to scroll now and what i've also done is i have made the bounds slightly smaller than the it's not slightly smaller than the uh, artboard frame itself so it's not touching the frame and hence we see that the last element does not touch the edge of the screen which was happening earlier now one more thing if you see maybe you don't like this cutout way so what you can do is you can select the scroll group and you can remove the clip content option so what will happen is now you'll be able to see all the things flowing but you will see that it does not stick to the right edge so if i come here see so perfect so this is how scroll free scroll works actually in figma and now let me show you the second part of the scroll which is called a page in some prototyping tool and it's more like an assisted one where you don't freely move it you always see something in the center so let me explain that from the example to explain the page scroll again i have four images and i also have my artboard here now what i'll do is i'll select all these four images and group them together like this and i'll again call them scroll and what i'll do is i'll move them in my artboard like this something like this so a scroll a page scroll is basically nothing but it's something where if at any given particular time one of the element is in the center right so to build this this is not built from the prototyping property it's built through drag so what i'll do is i'll duplicate my artboard four times because i have four elements to explain you how it looks like so let me just quickly do that so I have duplicated my artboard four times and now in every position, in every uh, artboard, I want a different element to be in the center. So in this one first is in the center, I'll select this group and I'll make sure the second one is in the center. Okay, so now I have four artboards and different images are there in the center of all these artboards now to create this page scroll what we need to do is we need to link the first one let me just move it around so you need to go to the prototyping tab and link the first one to the second artboard and instead of on click you need to on drag and navigate to smart animate and you can do ease in or ease out it's up to you ease out is fine and 300 milliseconds perfect now you also want that from second you should first of all be able to go to the first artboard again let me just give it a little bit more spacing okay so from the second one what we need to do is we should be able to go to the first one Instead of on click again on drag, navigate to smart animate 300 milliseconds perfect. And from second, also you should also be able to go to the third one. So, what I'll do is again select the needle and instead of on click again on drag, navigate to iPhone 11 perfect is out 300 milliseconds. Now, just look at this still uh, this itself. Let's see how it looks like. So, I am here. So if you see, uh, if I move it around, I am not able to freely move it. I am only always getting something in the center, right? And let me do the same thing. Let me do the same prototyping for all the other 
elements let me just quickly do that So yeah, I am done with my prototyping where I have selected uh, all of the four artboards and I have linked them through drag back and forth and let's see how it overall looks like. So if you see, I am always seeing something in the center. So unless the free scroll, uh, there is always something in the center. I am not able to move it to any position that I want. So always the center. To make it more dramatic, uh, what you can also do is you, have, you might have seen in many of the apps. You can make other elements smaller or maybe lighter in um, opacity so that it looks even more dramatic. Let me also just do that quickly. So guys, to make things more dramatic, what I have done is I have made the other tiles except the center one smaller. So in this one, the other tiles are smaller and in this one, the center one is bigger and the rest of the tiles are smaller. So I've done that for all the artboards and let's see how it looks like. See, so you see, you see, you get this really nice dramatic effect of image becoming bigger with uh, the movement. So yeah, that's how you make a page scroll and make it even more dramatic. You can play around with opacities. You can also play around with easing options that you see here. Uh, you can, I have done ease out, but you can also do ease out back, ease in, ease out. Just check it out what works for you and you can add even more dramatic things to your scrolls. So that's it. That's how page scroll works. I hope you like this video and I'll be posting up more Figma tutorials, more simple bite-sized Figma tutorials in my upcoming videos. So do share and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.